Well, welcome to tonight's interview with CMJ UK. We're going to begin with the notices. Um, so sit back and watch as we look at the first notice, which is going to be about our CMJ UK conference this year in July with Galvin, Gavin Calver, who is the CEO of the Evangelical Alliance, and he's our keynote speaker. So it's going to be really interesting. But we don't just have a conference for the adults, we've got a conference for the young people, and this will be dynamic. It's growing in interest and numbers every year, and Youth with for Christ are going to be leading that this time. It's only £49 per young person. So do sign up and sign up the youth of your church if you can. Children go free, small children. If you want to give to CMJ, this is um, a QR code. You can donate to CMJ UK using that, or you can visit our website or ring the office or however you want. But we appreciate all the support that we have. Um, and my next interview after tonight, and you don't even know who that is, some of you yet, will be Roy Thurley on the 24th of March, followed by Daryl Fenton in May, and there may be one in April. Now, our guest tonight is a school teacher, a speaker, and a worship leader who was secretary and then president of the BMJA. Now, that's not the British Medical Journal Association, but it is the British Messianic Jewish Alliance. He was secretary and then he was the president for six to nine years. And now he's the vice president with Richard Harvey back at the helm. You might remember Richard from a previous interview. He's now the president. Tonight's speaker then, our guest, is a man of many talents. So please welcome Jerry Cohen. Shalom. Jerry, it's so Lovely good to, to have you here tonight. Shalom. <laughs> it's so exciting to have you. And uh, I know we've spoken before, but never on camera. So that's really good. No. So I want to start at the very beginning. And uh, where's a better place to start than your ancestors and where you come from? So let's take a look at some of them. They look amazing. Would you like to explain? Yes. Well, as you can see from the incredible waist of my, that's my great grandma, Sarah. Now, Sarah was married to Wolf, who's the gentleman with the distinguished beard. Uh, and that's their son, uh, Joseph or Yosef, who's my grandpa. That's my on my mother's side and we reckon this was in uh the place that i can never ex uh, do gavapolis <laughs> i think that's what it is and we're looking at the the um uh the po poland uh and from before there they were almost certainly in russia for both sides of the family russia into poland there's groups in latvia and they kind of squeeze themselves in and finally end up coming into europe and here um so that's uh, my I'm grandpa. I'm glad, I'm glad, Jimmy, that you said that name because uh, I, I can't pronounce it. But <laughs> now, I don't know who these people are. I, I knew who the last group were, but I'm going to put them on well, a little bit closer because they're hard to see. There. Sure. Okay. So that's my dad, Sid, Sidney, on the left hand side mm -hmm. with the glasses. And then in the center, uh, that's him. Uh, I think that was only a short while after. He and my mum, Margot, got married. Um, and then you've got uh, cousin, uh, auntie, and. He looks like he should be working mom. for the underground, your father, I think. Uh, uh, we have yeah. a suspicion that there were lots of things he did that nobody knew about. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, this is another group of aunties and uncles, almost certainly at Westcliff on Sea, which is where my grandpa settled uh, and uh, carried on uh, living. On the right hand side, you will see that little cheeky guy who thinks he can get away with everything in the middle. That's me. And then He's below him, is uh, my brother jeremy 
just to confuse everybody we have a jeremy and a gerald but we both prefer to be called jerry um oh, and then right up at the right up at the top it's not helen shapiro that's my sister josie mm -hmm. and then she's uh, a good contender for helen oh absolutely beehive hairdo and everything so you can <laughs> you can imagine where it is you know the 60s um and then mm -hmm above me uh, between mum and dad is my older brother mm. paul and and mum and dad either side and that was in our mm. house in uh, in uh, uh, north finchley uh, mm. where i was uh, growing mm. up this is a little bit before that time then <laughs> who's this yeah that, that that's some way before and uh, I never figure out exactly who it is, but we we oh. I'm pretty sure Lady with the Big Hat um is definitely a, uh, one of our main aunties. My mum had uh three brothers, no, three sisters and a brother, if I remember rightly. Mm. And she was kind of uh -huh. in the middle of that. And it was very much uh, an important aspect of you know, when you go go to see grandma, she'll show you all the pictures and, and everybody wanted to yeah. see all the pictures that grandma had taken. And it's interesting <laughs> because the first picture you showed us, um, the idea of taking a picture at that time, which was in the sort of the late 1800s, mm -hmm. um, was uh, a well-to-do families, typically. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely, we, yeah. Know, we know that uh, Grandpa Wolf made a, a big thing of having this, I have another picture um, of them some years later, and his hair has turned white. Um, it's fascinating mm. to see this. They're, they're precious. And it's a pity, though, that they don't all put their names and dates on the back of these pictures, isn't it? Oh, uh, I know. Um, I know. <laughs> so when we were talking, um, you said that your favourite psalm was 139, or well, at least not your favourite, but it's very, very special to you. Can you say why? Yeah. It really is so important. You see where it says that uh, uh, all the days that were ordained for me, you know, that you were knitting me together in my mother's womb. And I think that's true for all of us. But I found especially as, as I learned about what happened to me, I mean, I was... I was known in Finchley uh, in, in, in Barnet Hospital as the bag of sugar baby um, because I weighed barely over two pounds and I was born at 28 weeks. That wasn't me, but um, I was not expected to live. I was born on March the 2nd, so I've got to wait nearly a year for my next birthday, um, but I should have been born on May the 30th. So no, that's a long that's distance. A my mum was yeah. very unwell. Um, mm -hmm. My mum was very unwell. Um, and we had a situation where I was fostered out for six or seven months, at least, to a family who were very good at taking care of uh, underweight babies. Um, mm -hmm. And um, to this day, I have certain difficulties with uh, lung functions uh because yeah. of that so i've got C copd but i also have a great god mm. who is able to help me in situations when i find you know myself uh yeah that. but every Absolutely. day yeah. I, you know known by god mm. Mm. that's so precious yeah i i think that the trouble with the picture is that there wasn't there's no scale if you were to see this little one next to an adult or even to a proper, yeah. you know, full size baby, you'd be quite shocked. But uh, I just love the part of that verse from Psalm 139. Mm. You wove me in my mother's womb, which is what you were saying. And, and my eyes, your yeah. eyes, God's yeah. eyes have seen my formless substance. And that's mm. only 29 weeks in the womb. Yeah. And then this is your family again. That's you with the curly hair. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's really cute. Um, yeah, and then I just, I just uh -huh. love these family pictures. Um, there am I sitting there with, I think it was a German gun, a Luger, a toy gun. Um, <laughs> we were I very, it was a remote very control for the TV. no, no, no. We didn't have those in the day. Although my dad <laughs> loved gadgets, 
Uh, I remember ah. him coming home one day with a remote control for our telly. It was basically a box with two buttons and a long, long, long piece of uh, cable. And we could switch between <laughs> BBC and ITV. And we could Big turn thing, the telly on and off. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, was... <laughs> oh, so yeah. I was about, yeah. you know, and there we are. I'm not convinced uh, that's we... you, though. What's happened to the curls? That's that's me with the the glasses, uh, the sunglasses. That is definitely me. Oh, I remember that. Really? I remember the shirt. Um, and I'm holding the book of uh, Arthur C. Clarke's 2001. And I just oh. bought the book. And so it's 1968 when the film came out. Uh, one of my favorite science fiction films. Um, uh. And uh, that's my. And Daryl, who I thought that was you. No, 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 no. That's that's cousin Daryl. Um, yeah, I, um, yeah. So that was that was then 1968 uh, or so. Uh, now, this is bubble. Is this bubble gum gate or was it chewing gum gate? This, <laughs> this is bubble gum gate. Uh, so the one that, as you look at it, the one with the, the hair going up like that. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll say it's a quiff rather than anything else. But my, my dear mother, um, she wasn't very keen on us having bubble gum. And um, I fell asleep one night with bubble gum in my mouth, which could have been a really really nasty thing however it Pretty dropped yeah. out and as i rolled it ended up in my hair now we all know from our life hacks that you have on the internet nowadays that uh, you remove bubble gum you put ice cubes on it well my mum yep. just went i told you this would happen got the pair of scissors <laughs> her pinking shears pinking shears from her um 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 not yeah, needlework basket. The, uh, so needlework gardening box. Snip. I I was in the middle of saying, but mum, snip, and she said, Well, what is it? And I said, It's school photos day. <laughs> and she said, Well, it's not my fault. And that's Ooh. how I appeared to the school. Um and, and here you are in the school. Yeah. That's right. We I am. Uh, you see the young lad at the bottom with the very, very white hair go one up and one to the left. So it's just below the first, the, just yeah. below the middle girl who's got a white dress on. So there I am. Chat with the girls. And that was there at uh, Comrie House School in, um, in Finchley. Um, lovely mm -hmm. little school. And I remember a conversation that I had with a boy Two to my left. His name's Nigel. I don't know how we got onto the subject. We were about 10 years old. And he said, um, you're Jewish, aren't you? And I said, yes. He said, well, what's Jesus when you're Jewish? Which I thought was curious. And I said, well, I think he was probably quite a good rabbi because lots of people wrote about him. And then I said, I think he must have existed because there's lots of books about him, but I don't really know mm. anything else. And that was sort of very early on. I'd sort of heard bits about him. And I, still, this is 53 years ago or so, I remember mm. that tiny little conversation. And you do mm. wonder, don't you, how God's preparing the hearts and lives of people over the yeah. years. Just a and what's little happened bit to Nigel? You don't know. You don't know. What I have no to idea. Nigel. No, no, yeah. I, no idea at interested. all. I've I've yeah. often done a little search. I'm like that. I tend to pop people's names in and see what comes mm. out. Um, so uh, if I did Nigel, that once. And, and... Yeah. Sorry. If, go if ahead. If Nigel's watching tonight, if Nigel's watching tonight, uh, please phone in. <laughs> please email. Absolutely. Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, if we seem to talk over each other, it's just the delay, that's all. Now, here's a very that's smart okay. family, your family. Oh, yeah. We know, we know how to put on a, a, a good tux. <laughs> so this is... Yeah, oh, there you go. go this is Paul, Paul's bar mitzvah. 
So uh-huh. he's 13. Uh-huh. So that goes 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So I was five. Five. Jeremy was six, seven, eight, nine. And then Paul was 13 and John, and Josie was 17. Uh, mm. And that was at our synagogue in North London, uh, Finchley. Mm. Uh, my mm. father and mother, uh, they weren't founder members, but they were close to it. They were kind of like really? very close in uh, on the found, founding. Because they we weren't... Had, um... you know, Sorry, no, no, they weren't Sorry. progressive liberal to start with, were they? No, they were, they were bo- both born into orthodox families and both grandparents were very much involved in that. And we, there are rumours about rabbis in the family tree. Um, and uh, both parents, uh, when they came over, to, uh, when they were sort of growing up, um, they knew that the Judaism that they had was very important but they were trying to see how it fits in a modern day. Um, you know, my father was born in 1917, uh, my mother in 1923. Um, they were married when she was quite young. She was she was 17 when she was married. Mm. Um, and uh, my mum went into the, the land army. She was a land army girl in the army, learned how to do all sorts of things with cars and mechanics and goodness mm. knows things. Um, my dad trained as an electrician and was a kind of like a reserved occupation. So he was, he was fixing sort of lighting on aeroplane hangers and all sorts of things. Mm. Amazing, really. And as I say, they, are- they, 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 became very imp- very much part of the synagogue, which uh, mm. my sister still goes to, and I often uh, I either go there from time to time or I'll, uh, I'll pop in on their Zoom, which they do, yes. which is rather amazing. Yeah. Mm. I, I would, that, that's, that's very interesting because we'll come back to your surname in a minute, but I just thought the fact that you're wearing this adult suit is quite comical. We wouldn't do that to a child now, would we? <laughs> I know, but I think we should. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love the idea. I, we, we, those of you who know me, uh, know that uh, yeah. any any opportunity to dress up, you know. Um, <laughs> so uh, maybe that's it where it came not, from. You were always very smart. Yeah, I child. think so. It's where my it's where my love of different ties comes from. Is definitely my dad. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, you were at um, the Woodhouse School that I just showed. And um, mm. we can get back to that in a moment. Yeah. And that's in, is that Finchley, isn't it? Or is it Barnet? Yeah, that's it. That's in Finchley. And that's uh, uh-huh. that's not far away from the synagogue where we were. Although we had moved mm. to Whetstone, which is in between yeah. kind of like Finchley and Barnet, kind of in between there. Mm. Um and uh, yeah, so I, I went there in 1971, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I was there for five years. Yeah. And, and left, uh, yeah, it um, was quite a place. It what, was good. Very, very lo- lots of Jewish children there, but it was a mm. secular school. It was a, you know, a, a, yeah. Uh, now, that's, this is uh, 1971, but who is this? That's Golda Meir, also known as my grandma. <laughs> but everybody yeah. says, "Oh, it's Golda." You know, you can see the uh, the resemblance. This is this is my dear, uh, wonderful uh, Rose Cohen. Now she was my father's uh, mother. Uh, she was born mm. in Paris in the late eighteen nineties. On the way uh, to Britain. Uh, because mm. uh, there had been some pogroms and the family mm. were just getting out of the way of anything worse. And uh, great-grandma was heavily pregnant, uh, stayed for a while in France where grandma was born. And this is my bar mitzvah. Mm. Now, your surname, when, you're, well, when your grandma, your father's mum, was in Paris, the surname was Stone. Was not stone. Sorry, your surname no, was Cohen. No, but we, it changed. We, when did it change? That's right. We started uh, off as Cohen's, Cohenim, mm. um, 
And my father changed his name in 1946 on the 1st of March. It goes like this. It's very simple, but very stupid. Uh, <laughs> you have two legs. I have two legs. A table has four legs. Therefore, we are a table. It's what we call a syllogism. Hitler hates the Jews. The Jews mm -hmm. live in the East End. Hitler bombs the East End. Therefore, we blame the Blitz on the Jews. Also mm -hmm. very stupid. My father mm -hmm. was looking to uh, start up a business and needed some uh, assistance financially. He had possible backers, but he thought he'd go to the bank, went to the bank mm -hmm. to somebody who knew him well, family was known to him and said, you've got a great business plan. We can't lend you any money. And he said, why? And he said, well, our bank has been told we are not allowed to lend to anybody with a Jewish name or with that we know is Jewish. He said, oh suppose I came back, if I suppose I came back with a non-Jewish name. And he said, you'd probably get the money. He said, but also it's not just the banks, it's other places as well you'll find difficulties. So my father chose the name Stone. He wanted something boring, but not quite as boring as Smith, apparently. That's what he said. So he chose Stone, a <laughs> uh, very, you know, sturdy name. Um, I found out years later about this because I was obviously growing up as a stone. Um, and that's why they used to call me Pebbles when I was a child. Yeah. So there I am thinking to myself that I'm a stone. And one day I just had this conversation with mum about Grandma Rose. I said, did she get married or did she revert back to a family name or something like that? Because she's Rose Cohen, not Rose Stone. To which my mum said, uh, we're Cohen's. Now, by this time, I'd come to faith in, in the Messiah. So it really meant a lot to me. And many years later, when I'd been thinking and praying about this, I decided to change my name back for the sake of my parents, for the sake of what had been stolen from us, basically, by Mm. by Adolf and also because mm. I just saw this as my calling to be priestly in some way mm. and I chose I chose the time of 1996 which was 50 years which is the jubilee of restoration of things that had been taken mm. and mm. Um, it was really interesting because that was very much a time when my ministry that had already been progressing had almost took an, an extra bound, an extra leap um, mm. into new yeah. things, new territories. And I just say, well, you know, a little bit of listening That's to God wonderful. doesn't do any harm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad you changed your name back. I think it's shocking uh, oh, that people yeah. felt forced to do that. But anyway, mm. you've reclaimed it. So Amen. here we are in your bar mitzvah. Yeah, that's it. Yes, there we are. Um, an amazing time. Um, read, I, I read from uh, Genesis 22, which is the binding of Isaac. That was the and when I, Yeah, so when now. I first started studying that, I asked my rabbi and the dear man who taught me this, which was uh, dear man Rosenwasser, I said, what's this about? I don't get it. He said, I don't get it either. Let's just read it. <laughs> and I said, no, honestly, yeah. I don't get it. He said, well, it starts off saying it was time for God to test Abram. That's what it is. And it just didn't quite work with me. I couldn't. The pieces didn't quite fit. Not at the time anyway. Mm. I think it's amazing, Jerry, because... It was in 1971 that you found Jesus, Yeshua, as the way to God. And it was partly because of your bar mitzvah, wasn't it? And and the lesson that you read. Well, Maybe this is a picture of you reading it. I don't know. It was, it was to do with my, because I was studying for my bar mitzvah 
and kind of like my yeah. Jewishness, as it were, my Jewish background was in in my mind a lot. And um, so I went, I was going with a friend to the local carnival in Finchley, uh, in Victoria Park. And we usually sort of went there year by year. Um, mm. So we went in um, and there was a little invitation, just a small bit of paper I got handed, come to the Jesus tent. At which point I thought, oh, goody, an argument, um, because I didn't see why, you know, the whole process of, you know, why should they hand these out? You know, can't you just keep yourself to yourself sort of thing? And I was kind of like five foot two zealot, really, because when you're studying by mitzvah, it's it's in your head all the time. Yeah. So I went along and the first thing I see is the baby show and then the Jesus tent. And I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to bother. And then I saw their placard, which had lots of different languages. And they had Bienvenue and Vilcom and uh, Shalom, which made me stop. And I thought, I can understand Christians in France. I can understand, you know, German. But why Shalom? So I went in to kind of, you know, I just really need to put them straight on this because that's not their language. Um, so I went in. Um, at which point the first person I met was a man called Paul, which is really interesting on so many different levels, not least of all was, and I've never been able to track him down over the years. His name was Paul Stone. And that was my brother's oh. name. My goodness. Yeah. Wow. If, that's you, if amazing. you ever, wonder, if you ever wonder whether God Sorry. exists, well, he's yeah. up, he's up to tricks like that. <laughs> We're going to oh, come gosh. back to uh, your testimony in a minute, but I want to just look at this. These are school friends. These and are you're my the curly guy. amazing school friends. I'm the curly guy. Now, there's two curlyish guys. There's the guy on the extreme right. That's Mike. Mike Sharp and I used to sit together uh, at school uh, an awful lot. We used to go out on our bicycles everywhere. He went into the tent with me at the same time i don't think he responded to uh the what he heard but when we had a school reunion about 10 years ago nine years ago he mentioned it Gosh. and he said yeah. you know didn't didn't you do, do you remember us going into and i said oh yes i said that's what made the difference to me mm. And wow, went, that's oh, amazing you remembered it. And I kind of think sometimes maybe God's still churning away. And these are my chums. He's not in this picture. Uh, back in, he's not in that picture, no. Um, oh, but uh, I... some of these some of these others are just quite amazing, really. I mean, there were so many yeah. to choose from. I was astounded that I actually had. <laughs> and there's, there's me with, um, that's my 13th birthday. And those of you who know... What's his name? Um, those of you who know the Big Bang Theory TV program, uh, you'll know mm. the character Sheldon, who wears a T-shirt over his shirt. Uh, that's, that's what you. I was doing then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. You were <laughs> um, a trendsetter. Here you are a bit oh, later then. You're grown up. Yeah. So I'm about 18 or there. And You're uh, this is one, one of the last pictures with my father. Um, this was my sister's flat um, in uh, in Barnet, and that's my mm -hmm. two nieces, uh, tiny little mm -hmm. nieces there, but now grown up and children of their own and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we're quite used to having uh, Christmas trees or Hanukkah bushes, whatever. Um, yeah. That's much – that's good. about eight or, eight or nine years ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what's wonderful that, Jerry, over the years think, is we we stay together yeah. as a family. Which yeah, is it's a brilliant precious. picture. That I think your your brothers and your sister and you, you just look so happy. You look full of fun and mischief. And I think it's a, a oh, beautiful yeah. family picture, that one. Um, and your we father. We didn't understand. Ah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. No, no, carry on. 
no, go on. We we didn't we didn't know that it's not normal to try and outdo each other with jokes and and fun. We didn't realise that most people when they sit down for Sunday lunch or other are very sensible. But our attitude okay. was somebody would start a conversation somebody else would come in with a joke or a quote or something else i'd probably be doing impressions of prince charles or something all sorts of things were going on mm -hmm. and it was just fun life uh yeah which is wonderful that comes over that's a great picture i love it yeah. so we're, oh, we're just this. trying to turn to the next one now this is your father yes it is looks just like him now uh, I'm just going to show you where that is. There, oh, okay. There so that's that's right by, that's right by me. Um, I got this. My sister couldn't stand it, but couldn't bear to get rid of it. And it was a portrait done. As far as we know, I think the rumours go back to Mallorca, where mm -hmm. we used to go in the sixties. And this was mm. a case of we're walking along the pier. And uh, there's this guy doing caricatures and he says to my dad, uh, I'll do something for you. And my father said, all right. Wow. And he said, I want you to draw me in nothing like a businessman. <laughs> I want something that is completely different. So what he did was he, he spent a few minutes sketching the face and getting that. And he said, uh, mm -hmm. come back later this afternoon it's it'll be ready my father absolutely cracked up he loved it he adored it and and i always have and i look mm. up there and i see that and i can imagine that my father's saying don't take it so seriously you know mm. we're here to oh. enjoy you know but now before you get into this well, actually, no. First of all, tell us what this is, um, because it doesn't even look like you, actually. I think you might be cribbing this. <laughs> yeah, no, this is me, 2429-7033. Uh, oh, my goodness. And well done. <laughs> this, oh, yeah. So this is uh, Royal Army Medical Corps in Ashvale, oh. Aldershot, um, 1975 or thereabouts. And... So uh, Were you still I school? went in. I had left school. I'd done my O levels, um, mm. and basically, my I came home, having done my final exam, and my dad said, um, "Have you thought about what you want to do next?" Now, what I wanted to say was, "Yes, I'm going to be uh, working for God." What I actually said was, "I'm not really too sure." And he said, well, we've got a major coming to see you on Thursday. And I thought, major what? <laughs> and he he decided that he thought it would be a, a very good idea for me to consider joining the army. Mm. And I'm kind of, I still have no idea exactly what, where that came from. Yeah. Um, and I went away for three days for a selection um conference uh, thing um going through mud and all sorts of muck and things like that so at the end of this i'm standing in front of this major general chap uh bristly mustache and a very good uh, wonderful chap and he said you've done really really well you've done so well that you could have the pick of any job in the army you would be wonderful you're just what we're looking for and i oh, great in my naivety said well, please, sir, if, if it's not at all too much bother, I'd rather not be killing people. And his face just mm. fell. And he went, oh, medic, and <laughs> signed me off. And that's how I Whoa. ended up in the Royal Army Medical Corps. That's amazing. Who's... Now, the, who's... Your father... Who's, yeah. Your father, although we've just seen him as the Joker... Um, it wasn't mm. so much of a joke when you got home from here, was it? We need to sort of <sighs> no. move on a bit, really, because I've got a lot to get through with you. <laughs> Indeed. Um, what you, what you need to know thing. is, because what we haven't covered is the fact that by this time, I was a believer in Yeshua. 
because well, you were of, beginning to get of, to that to the tent. Yeah. So now you can tell the yeah. other half. Exactly. Well, I went back the following night because I hadn't spent mm. any money at the fun fair because I'd spent the evening there. And the reason I went back was because I'd taken some literature with me because the guy, Paul, who talked to me about the Messiah, because I said, what are you doing using Hebrew? And he said, well, it's the language of Jesus. Mm. And I went, all right, I'll give you that one. And he said, because he's Jewish. And I said, well, okay, that's pretty logical. And he said, do you know why we believe that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah? And I said, well, I suppose somebody said things were going to happen, but I don't know what. And he took me through the Hebrew scriptures. And what's amazing is he knew this was God's appointment. He knew how to talk to a Jewish person about the Jewish Messiah. And it was really staggering for me to see the logic mm -hmm. of God's word. And I went back, as I say, I went back the following evening because I just, you know how the scripture talks about being under conviction of sin. And that was definite what happened. And I mean, what do I know from chopped liver? I'm 12 and a half years old. Uh, what do I know about sin? Well, I do know that I hadn't honored my parents. Mm -hmm. I knew that I'd stolen. I knew that I'd lied. I knew that I'd done so many of the other things. I knew I hadn't put God first. I mean, there I was. Of course, I'm doing my bar mitzvah portion. But mm -hmm. God was in there when it was convenient. So I hadn't put God first. And this dear people there, they, they sat and, and talked with me. And uh, one of them said, do you, want, do you want us to pray for you? And so I sort of looked around for a siddur, a prayer book, or the equivalent. And um, I said, well, all right. And so when as this guy prayed for me, the moment he started praying, I, I opened my eyes again because I know that Christians put their hands together and close their eyes because that's the, the way to do it. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I I had to open my eyes because he's talking to someone in the room. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. He's talking to someone that he knows. And that really, really made me aware that God is real. I, I knew he was, but in a distant way, you know up on a cloud somewhere checking out every now and then but this was relational god and mm -hmm. uh, i know now that this was the spirit of god uh showing me who i am compared mm -hmm. to who he is and i just wept uh mm -hmm. and i sought forgiveness and um i i asked yeshua to to take up his rightful place in my life mm -hmm. Uh, which is when the fireworks went off and it was just, you know, such absolute certainty that this was true, but also a certainty that this was going to cause a bit of, well, in our, in our family, we use the word broigus, which is like, whenever anything goes wrong, it'll go wrong. But I also knew, I now knew, wow, this is the sun going up the hill with the wood on his back because the father is telling him to, because there's going to be a sacrifice, now my bar mitzvah makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then... That's absolutely course, brilliant, to, yeah. Yeah. And then the next step is, uh, what are my parents going to say? Well, they're not going to say anything unless I tell them. And I think I'm going to have to tell them. Um, so... After a few months of various things going on, my parents realized that my friend's house that I was going to was a rather large house. It's actually called a church, and my friend was called Jesus. <laughs> and when I said I was off to my friend's house on Sunday on my bicycle, that's where I was going. Hmm. Um, and we really had to sort of face this. And I said, look, I'm sure that I have not stopped being Jewish. I'm sure that for me, I've found the Jewish Messiah and I have bar mitzvah. I have become a son of the covenant of the blessings. 
and I don't want mm -hmm. to stop being Jewish, but I believe that this is true for me. Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult. Father was very upset. Um, and I, I, I do understand why. Because if you don't realize who the Messiah is, for many Jewish people, for a child of theirs to turn around and say, basically, you're wrong, I'm right. You've rejected mm -hmm. him for 2,000 years. Because ultimately, that's what the truth is saying. But that's not what I was, that's not how I was saying at all. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was very, very difficult. Hence, I come home from the army. And my mother said, when you get home, you have a choice that dad is asking you and it's very mm. serious um and basically it was do i want to carry on following this particular way of life or will i stay at home and not do that and i said and i got in i said well uh, i understand what you're saying um i can't give this up it's now been you know four years five six I said, I can't give this up. It's not a phase that I'm going through. It's not sort of a, you know, he'll grow out of it sort of thing. Um, yeah. I do love, I do love you, but I need, uh, you know, I'm, if I were to stop now, then I would be denying everything that I've seen to be true. And mm. Dad said, "Well, we thought we thought you'd say that. We thought that. So I paid for the first week in a bed and breakfast around the corner." Pay me mm -hmm. back when you've got the got a job, which well, is just kind of like okay. And I literally had my army army mm -hmm. case. I went upstairs, got a few more bits in there, closed it, and went. Yeah. And that and that mm. that was that. And echoing in my head was the scripture that uh, says that he will put the lonely in families. Mm. And so I knew that even though I was, this was happening, that God would take care of me through the years. But I did ask him to bring our family back together again. And mm. we definitely, we were very much reconciled. And here's a family, here's a wonderful family mm. of, of mine. So this picture is taken at Christchurch, North Finchley. Uh, I was down the road at yeah. St. Paul's, Finchley. <laughs> but you've got... One or two well-known people amongst your crowd, apart from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got, if you look towards the right of the picture, and uh, you can see myself with my head on one side a little bit, uh, yeah. that's me. And then this incredibly good-looking Greek man with a uh, incredible chiseled jawbone uh, and cheekbones. That's that's my dear friend, J. John, uh, John Iwanu, who you may know. Um, and next mm. to him is the guy who brought him to faith, Andy, Andy Economides. You know, we often hear about oh, Billy Graham, off, but we don't know. Nearly off the yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah, nearly off. Okay. So listen. if you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, go on. I'm going to. I'm going to move on to the next slide, but keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the people, the people who bring us to faith often don't yeah. get noticed. And that's why I'm mentioning they this don't. guy, Paul, Paul, you know, because that's precious. Are you still in touch with uh, him? Uh, I have no idea. I just literally, I spoke with him that night and the night after, and that was it. Never heard of him again. Um, so this is like Stephen, pow, oh, Philip rather, pow, here you are. <laughs> go and talk to this guy and then go off again, you know. Yeah. So it, uh, that's, that's another one if he's listening. Uh, so this is where you did your teacher training. But I want to move on that's because right. yeah. you took up in your spare time, you were a really good, uh, your hobby was guitar playing. Yes, and you have a nickname, started. which is called, yeah. <laughs> the coach. Yeah. Back to 1974 and Longfellow Serenade from Neil Diamond. Longfellow Serenade 
such were the plans I made She was a lady and I was a dreamer With only words to trade You know that I was made for a night like this Warmed by stolen kiss For I was lonely <laughs> that there was we are. sneaky. <laughs> that was sneaky of you, Jane. <laughs> yeah, the kosher crooner. <laughs> We can't yeah, speak about right. it really because we, we've got to push on. But there you are singing with, is no, that no, your no. sister or something? No, no. That's no, that's, uh, right, that's okay. a professional singer who uh, who invited me to one of her gigs. Yeah. Okay. So um, this guy, this caricature saying hi, um, is quite a, yeah. he likes a lot of jokes, don't you? So we're just going to whiz through these oh, if you want to say anything I'm about one. So. Yeah. Well, just very simply that you're all I'm always looking for an in to have a conversation with somebody to get people interested. Um we have that's not such you. terrible news. That's not me. That's a guy from the film Blazing Saddles, which I went to see with yeah. my friend Mike about five times yeah. when we were young. Um but you know <laughs> sometimes and whilst I do, ah, oh, now that is the difference between Prince Charles and me. And it's very yeah. obvious because uh, one is the heir apparent and the other one is a hairy parent. <laughs> hairy parent. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, one. And this one. Yeah. And oh, my goodness, this is the length of my hair during lockdown. Um, and then I. Uh, I went from my, my first haircut it. after lockdown. Yeah. He oh, right. is I my like my go-to guy, my go-to guy for any quotes and, and jokes. Uh, Groucho uh -huh. Marx. Uh, Nothing. Yeah. Some things don't change. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, so, go. right, and then, so apart from being a kosher crooner uh, and, and all yeah. the things that you're doing, um, you do go and speak in churches and what's happening here? Yeah. This was uh, a vineyard church in St. Albans that I've recently got to know over the last year or so. And uh, they had about 60 children, uh, which they get mm. regularly. And uh, a dear lady who had, who had got to know me through uh, one, one sentence that she said in a bookshop that's uh, where she was looking for somebody to help her understand messianic things. And the person in the book said, oh, Jerry Cohen, he'll be the one. <laughs> I have no idea who it was to this day. <laughs> um, really? So she invited me to to go and um, and teach there. For, uh, so I taught about Hanukkah. And on the mm. Hanukkah, there's these tiny little flames. And all the children mm. got a flame and put them up there. And so I took the oh, guitar wow. and all sorts of things. It was a wonderful good. time. Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea, that one. So, I mean, you, you're doing all of this. I mean, you know... All the Jewish people of the world call their scriptures the Hebrew scriptures, and we call that book the Old Testament. I mean, that's really a bit of an insult, isn't it? I mean, I, in a way, it's oh, yeah. How... but you know, it's just this well, whole idea. Yeah, it... that... I do I find it bizarre, but you know, 
Never mind. Yeah. One of those things. We try one of those to call things. It the Hebrew scriptures. Now, whose whose program are you on here? Uh, this was the Voice of Islam radio, uh, because the guy on the right is a teacher of religious studies. Got to know me through something that I'm involved in with, uh, that I helped to to lead with nine thousand other teachers uh, of RE. Mm -hmm. And he said, could you come on our radio show and talk about the relationship between Judaism and Christianity and Islam? So I talked about mm. Abraham and I talked about yeah. how for, for, the, for the, the idea of Isaac for the Jewish and Christian people. Um, mm. And, and uh, it was just an amazing opportunity to, to talk favorably um in the context of uh, a muslim uh, islamic radio program and then they invited me to one of their the meetings their their national meetings um to give a jewish perspective on what they were talking about um which was just an amazing opportunity because then that led me to be able to speak about the hebrew scriptures and the promise of the true messiah yeah great so great i grabbed i grabbed those opportunities yeah yeah and with happy <laughs> quickly just in one second <laughs> okay barry schwartz is one of the leading experts on the shroud of turin and wow. he how do you know him because he was in this meeting the uh, the muslim people so i walk oh. in and he sudden he calls out thank the lord i'm not the only jew in the village <laughs> <laughs> because we had i mean there were i want to share with you oh, sorry. sorry 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 just just a moment uh, wendy thousands sorry of, thousands of uh, <laughs> muslim people realize. um yeah there and so it's a great opportunity, opportunity you you Absolutely. Yeah, I understand that. We could discuss yeah. it a lot more, but I want you to listen to this lady. I want to share with you a short story about Jerry Cohen. And it's all good, Jerry, so relax. <laughs> now, Jerry's a teacher, and I know most of you know that. Jerry's a teacher by profession in a school. However, I want to tell you about the time that Jerry really impacted me about the word of God through his teaching. Not long after Jerry's third child was born, my husband and I attended a conference of the British Messianic Jewish Alliance. And during this conference, we had a Shabbat morning service, as we usually do. And Jerry was carrying a small replica Torah scroll to the platform at the front to read the portion for that Shabbat. And as he did so, there were tears in his eyes. And he explained to us that while he was carrying the scroll, it felt like he was carrying his beautiful child. The scroll was a small one and about the size and weight of the new life that was a blessing to the whole family. And it occurred to Jerry while he was carrying the scroll that the new life, the possibilities, the potential that lie in his newborn child are also to be found in the Torah, which blesses us abundantly with wisdom and direction so that we might have new life. And the impact of Jerry sharing this at that service has remained with me ever since. And this is what teaching is all about. The mark of a great teacher and preacher is to be able to share what's around them to bring understanding and clarity to a subject. This is what Jesus did in his parables. He took the everyday and he made it significant so that people could understand his teaching. And this is just one example of the many, many times Jerry has done that in bringing God's word to life. His teaching is quite remarkable and his students at his school are blessed to have him and so is the congregation he attends. Jerry, you're a mensch. <laughs> wow. Uh, no. uh, that, what about that? Is, that is such a blessing. Let me tell you something. I remember that so clearly. I remember the feeling of walking with with the torah scroll and i still remember my daughter's 15 coming up 16 now yeah and it's still the, still there still there mm. dear wendy mm. yeah. bless her yeah <laughs> uh. this is you at the bmja but we're not going to stop there we're going to move on 
And is this the BMJA or was it in a school? That that was last that was last year's uh, Hanukkah at our uh, Bet Sar Shalom is our congregation uh -huh. that I'm a co-leader of in North London, and mm. uh, so that was our Hanukkah celebration. Uh, mm. We just wanted everybody to be delighted. We um, uh, we had one or two pictures of that, but I wanted to move on. So you are mm. co-leader of a Messianic Fellowship in North London that's actually yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Just tell me why you two are both looking like twins. How you've got the same tie, the same uh, hat, the same blade. <laughs> this same this bag. is Jock, my dear friend from the army days. He was oh. he's a believer. He's a Gentile believer. We lost contact in 1976, uh, 78, and mm. we both separately vowed that we would somehow find each other, and we did through the magic of mm. Facebook, and we found mm. out we were living ten, ten, barely 10 miles away from each other. Brilliant. Um, now, Jerry is a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I know that with the delay, you will hear that after we've spoken. Um, the teacher, this is our last section. So we've only got like two minutes, but we we'll might take one or two extras. Yeah. And you, in your blurb about yourself, I found online, you can speak some French and read some Hebrew and Greek. So there we have it. <laughs> Indeed. That's rather clever. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, it's just one of those things. I taught myself the Greek because i wanted oh. to really understand what the scriptures were saying i still don't get i know it it's got the logos time. there but that's all it's yeah anyway. logos and, and uh, yeah. Sheet. anyhow there so go. there you go yes. look at the, this is the joker again but this is in school now and i just want to get yes. to the end because i want you to talk about that but what's all this this is you with your ties oh all sorts of ties uh my students love uh, the ties. This tie that I'm wearing today with the tree, oh. I drew oh. in 19, 17th of May 1997 while I was at university. And it's the uh, He lets me, He restores my soul by the still oh, waters. That's so that's what that oh. is. Um, but yeah, it's just any opportunity to, uh, to wear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're also into something to do with, you like sci fi or at least. Star Trek. I like good. I like good quality sci-fi that doesn't uh, dumb down. Um, I don't like horror stuff, but I do like. Um, there we go. Yes, indeed. And I'm, I'm wondering if child. you're sitting on a plinth there. <laughs> Have you got one of those? Black <laughs> things? <laughs> no, I haven't. No. Um, but of course, <laughs> I, lo Kirk. I love to teach. Yes, I love to teach students about that, which yeah. is not originally from Star Trek. But it's originally the the priestly blessing, uh, which mm. makes the letter Shin. And uh, yeah. when Leonard Nimoy, Jewish guy, actor, decided mm. that that's what he would use. But yes, this is my window on the world that I have in my classroom. Do you do this, and or I, do your students do I, this? I I do I do these. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, these yeah. are your drawings. Yeah. So that was. <laughs> these are mine. So Hanukkah that's brilliant. and. Uh, the nativity. So, right what what do you say another. to what do you say to people, Jewish people, who think that when others tell them about Yeshua, about Jesus, that we're trying to grab their scalp and stop them being Jewish? What would you say? Well, I haven't stopped being Jewish, and I'm still Jewish exactly. after you know the whole length of my life. But I mm -hmm. know that my Jewish Messiah is who He said He is. No matter what anybody else says about Him, He is the genuine article and that's mm. why i'm comfortable in him that's what i mean this was a, a visit to some dear friends a few months back and we saw this sculpture in the it was a church uh um setting and um i thought i'm gonna just get me a picture of that and i know i'll be using it somewhere on a blog or something like that underneath mm. of the everlasting arms that's i think that's my god for me that he's firm he's not going to let me get away with stuff but his love for me is so absolutely secure even after all these years oh that's a good verse to have that's a good verse <laughs> that's what there. came to me i know i 
I wanted you to say what you thought about it for yourself, but but this is yeah. also, you know, this is in the Hebrew scriptures, and it's talking about yeah, him being absolutely. their shepherd to carry them like yeah. in his hands. Absolutely. And, uh, and Jesus was Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, with, with my a lot of what we do in the congregation um is just to open up the Hebrew scriptures and show how they they fit so synchronicity with with like a, a gears in a mesh in a cogs mm. you know fit so mm. well together with with uh, one with the other mm. um so we have we have jewish and gentile folk together and it's just wonderful to be able to open up the hebrew scriptures open up mm. the 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 brit Hadashah, the the promises in the gospels and say look that is this it's just mirror image one to another um mm. all i can say yeah. is jane that i'm so grateful to god that he opened up my eyes when i was so blind mm. he would do that for anybody who's looking mm. you know seek me mm. if you seek me with all your heart then i will be found by you he says it's beautiful that's verse. a promise so absolutely if you if you have any questions that are directly for jerry there are his contact details if you have any questions that you want to, for, to send to me to give to Jerry, there's my detail. And also, if you want to look at to see what CMJ is up to, that's our website. Everything's on there. All the notices, everything we need you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's been my absolute pleasure to have you, Jerry, uh -huh. tonight. Really enjoyed listening it's to you. Lovely. We could have had another hour because there's lots of <laughs> theological questions and teaching questions I wanted to ask. Oh. But again, we always run out of time, but it's just been so yeah. interesting. Thank you so much for tonight. Thank you so much, Jane. Bless you. I am hoping to be at the conference in uh, yeah. uh, up, up in North. So if anybody goes, I want to see the guy, or I want a question, I want to ask him, then... Um, yeah i'm um, planning to be ask. there uh, de definitely on the sunday hopefully on the saturday as well well good but yeah that'd yeah. be grand and again and you thank need you a lift. so much for... <laughs> that thank would you. be good that would be good from north london <laughs> yep anybody but, going from uh, north london off the uh, lift. that'd be great mm -hmm. i mean if you were going on the friday evening then i could go for the whole weekend if you go oh, on the Saturday Wayne. morning, we have to find someone. That then. would be, please, please, <laughs> even better. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a long way to right, walk. Well. <laughs> Jane, thank you again, and thank you thank to you. CMJ. Okay. I really yeah. appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Jerry. Good night. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. Good night.